Hey everyone, Boone here. So today I'm going to show you how to use shape layers in Adobe After Effects to create these cool little comic book style speech bubbles. Now, not only are these really easy to create, but they're very versatile. You can customize them to fit the look of any project, which is very cool. So let's get started. So the first thing I want to do is create my circle speech bubble. So I'm going to go over here, grab the ellipse tool, and I can make any adjustments to the fill and stroke information here. I'm happy with the white fill and a black stroke set at 20 pixels. This is exactly what I want. So I'm going to click and drag, hold the shift key to constrain your proportions, and then release. And when I release, the anchor point automatically centers. This might not happen for you, and if it doesn't, you're going to want to change that. Go to Preferences, General, and you can select Center Anchor Point in New Shape Layers. Now this is a relatively new feature, so if you're using an older version of After Effects, you might not have that. Now I'm going to center this in my composition. I'm using the Align panel here. Okay, so now I have the beginnings of my speech bubble here. I have the shape layer down here. I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to rename this circle. And if you look in the elements here, the contents, I have an ellipse. I'm going to rename this circle as well. Because it's very important when working with shape layers that you keep everything organized because it's easy to get confused with all these elements. Because you see here, now with this circle, I open this up. It's a group of attributes. Uh, we have transformation attributes, fill and stroke information, and the path information. So there's a lot of stuff going on here. And when you start adding a lot of elements, it gets very confusing. Okay, now I want to add my talk triangle. So I'm going to go over here, grab my pen tool, and with my shape layer selected, I'll start to draw a shape. And it's important that I have the shape layer selected because if I don't, it's going to create a new layer, and that's not what we want. So my stroke and fill information is still set to what I want, 20 pixels black. And I'm going to go ahead and draw a quick triangle. And there we have our talk triangle. Now, when you're working with shape layers, you can see that, well, we just added a new element here. I'm going to go down and name this shape talk triangle, because again, let's keep it organized. Now, when you're working with shape layers here, I can click once to select the entire shape or I can double click to select individual elements. So now I have the talk triangle selected, I'm moving it around. But if you notice the anchor points way over here, I do not want that. So I'm gonna grab the pan behind tool, which moves anchor points, and I'm gonna move that anchor point to the top in the middle of this. Because I wanna be able to manipulate and transform this talk triangle later, and I want it to be manipulated from that anchor point here, not over here. That would give me some strange transformations. Okay, I'm going to switch back to the selection tool. Now what we want to do is we want to merge the paths here because this is not looking very good. So I'm going to select the contents. And again, I don't want to have any of these selected because if I add the merge paths, it will add it within the group. And once again, that's not what we want. So I'm going to click this add button over here. I can select merge paths. And now it has merged those paths. And if you look down here, not only has it added this merge paths attribute, but it's also added a stroke and a fill. If I turn the fill off, you can see stroke and fill are there. Now, what's cool about this, let me select this top triangle again. Now look what happens. When I move this around, it's automatically merging those paths. So I could put this top triangle wherever I want, and it's going to manipulate from that anchor point that I reset. So it's very, very cool, but look what happens when I drag it out. Now you can see it's its own little shape here. So I can move it to the top, move it to the bottom, and rotate it. And I can do that with the selection tool here, or I can open up the transformation attributes of the talk triangle and move it there th that way as well. Okay, so now, so now I have my speech bubble here. Now the fun comes in um, where I can do just tons of different customization options. As I said, these are all groups with all their different attribute, attributes. So there's just there's just a ton of different stuff you could do here. You could change the color of the stroke. You could change the width of the stroke, the color of the fill. The For instance, if I open up the circle here and uh, the transformation options, I could skew that circle out. I could change the scale to give me more of an oval. It's just uh, you could kind of go crazy here with this. But all I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the stroke and I'm going to round out these edges here. So I'm going to change it to round, and that's going to round those out. Okay, so there we have our circular speech bubble. So you saw that was kind of like three simple steps. We created the shape elements, we merged them, and then we fine-tuned them. So it's quite simple. Let me show you another example. I'm going to move this off. Now let's create like a quick uh, little rectangle speech bubble using the same 
kind of rules here. I'm going to select the rectangle tool and make sure you click off of the shape layer. Otherwise, it's going to add it within this shape layer. Okay, and our stroke and fill options are set the same. This is looking good. Okay, so we have our rectangle here. I'm going to rename this rectangle. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and lock off this circle just so we don't accidentally manipulate it. Now, with this layer selected, I'm going to go ahead and add top triangle. There we go. Content selected. I'm going to add the merge paths. And there we go. Just in a couple of seconds, I was able to create that. Now, look what happened there. See, this the difference between the rectangle and the Bezier path here is one is a parametric shape, which is the rectangle, and this one is a Bezier path. So if I double click here, I can actually manipulate this path. So for instance, if I want to curve out this, I can change. I'm going to go up and grab the convert vertex tool. This is going to convert this to this Bezier. And what I can do here is really going to make more of a curved, um, let's use a selection tool here. Now you can see we're getting a little bit of a different look here. Now I'm going to go down to the stroke and I want to round off those edges again. That's more of the look that I want. Now with the rectangles, you even have a little bit of a different, um, different options here. If you look down here, I have roundness, so I can round that off. I didn't rename my talk triangle here. Rename this talk triangle. There you go. Now you have this particular one. And once again, you saw the customization options I have there. Just a lot of stuff that you can manipulate there. Okay, last but not least, let's create something a little more dynamic. Let's make uh, like a splat kind of star looking thing. So if I go down and grab the star tool, I'm going to move this over. And I'm going to click and drag. Now, if you hit the up and down arrow keys as you're dragging, that will add and or subtract uh, points. I'm going to hold the shift key, kind of align this. Okay, now one thing I don't like about this is the symmetry. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm not going to add a talk triangle to this one. I'm going to use one of the edges, uh, one of the points as a talk triangle. So I'm going to open up this polystar here. And if open up polystar path, now you see with this, we have a lot of customization options here. So I could kind of mess around with the radius here. I'm going to lower the outer radius. Then I'm going to up the inner roundness, kind of bump that up. Now we're having some problems with the edges there. So I can go to the stroke once again, round out the corners. Now I, I'm going to change this from a parametric shape to a Bezier path. So what, how I do that is I go over here and I select the path, and if I right click, it says convert to Bezier path. That's going to take all those options away and just give me this path here. But the cool thing is, now I can really come in here, double click, I can grab these individual points and really start to customize a particular look that's not, you know, perfectly symmetrical, which is not, not very cool. It's not what I want. So now I can kind of manipulate these to give me something a little more uh, dynamic than what I was working with before. And I could come down here and this will be, as I said before, my talk triangle. And there we have it. I'm going to close this up. Let's rename this uh, splat. So there you go. Now, just in a few minutes, you see that I've created these three different comic book style speech bubbles and you know you could really customize and get something completely different whatever you want okay if you enjoy this project and you actually want to use these same elements that I created I sell the After Effects project file on my website for it's very reasonably priced also I have it for version 2018 and version 2019 and if you're looking for something a little bit more professional I sell a professional product called the Comic Creator Speech Bubbles Kit now this is only available for After Effects 2019, the latest version of After Effects. It has a ton of features here. There's 15 plus graphics that you can use. They have animation presets. Text is included. You can easily change the text. You have 20 plus customization options for each graphic. Everything's easy to customize via expression controls on null layers. Super cool project, so be sure to check that out on my website.
You can find links for everything in the video description. Also, for you Premiere Pro users, I'll be creating some Mogurt files based on these graphics. They'll have all the 20 plus customization options that you can really easily customize these speech bubbles in Premiere Pro. I'll probably be releasing that within the next two weeks here. If you check back, I'm gonna add that link in the video description here, or you can just subscribe to my newsletter on my website where I'm gonna be sending out the links to that information, as well as information on sales for all the products on my website. All right, thanks a lot for checking out my tutorial and I'll see you next time.